Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. The iPhone 14 Pro Max was the worst iPhone I'd ever used. Is this one any better? So is it weird to say like the iPhone 15, 15 Pro and Pro Max are like a quarter of the way through the life cycle, which seems just bizarre and strange, but they came out in September and you know, a year and then a new one comes out. It's weird. I've had my iPhone 15 Pro Max since release day one. It's been in my pocket and I've used it like I use every other phone. I've been told, not easy on my phones. I'm on them a lot, no surprise. Things like taking pictures of my kids, taking a pictures of a bunch of baseball games. Obviously a lot of social media. I do a lot of video editing even on my phone. I use my phone as external storage device. Anything you could think of for a phone, like I do it. And I was not so excited about the 15 Pro Max, mostly because my 14 Pro Max, whole video on that, uh, was the worst iPhone that I had ever used and primarily because of battery. And so I came into the 15 Pro Max with like expectations normally here and they were like down here. So how has it held up? There's a lot of big changes with the 15 Pro line. Again, my main phone has been the 15 Pro Max. So that's the phone I'm talking about here is titanium. And I think that sounds awesome using it in watches. But then there were reports of it being like the most fragile uh, iPhone ever. I have traditionally always had my phone in a case because I just, I don't trust myself as a person. But I got brave uh, this past week prior to filming this. Um, I took it out of the case. That's going on natural. Haven't dropped it yet. Hasn't fallen out of my pocket yet. Hasn't met the concrete or floor yet. So in that aspect, it's holding up great. I don't have any dings or scratches on it. I don't have any dings or scratches on the screen. Although I will say this is the first iPhone in a long time that I put a screen protector on. But at least, you know, three, four months later, from a build standpoint, the phone has actually held up very, very well. But my biggest concern I had, again, was battery life. Uh, and the issue that I had, and a lot of others who had 14 Pros and 14 Pro Maxes, was insane battery degradation. Uh, by the time I traded in my 14 Pro Max, uh, I was at just about 80% battery health, and that was within a year, which is just an insane amount to have happen. I'm happy to say that again, three or four months past my 15 Pro Max, I have 100 percent battery health, which has been my experience with every other iPhone, save for that 14. Uh, so battery life has been awesome. No issue getting through a full day at all. Still I'm at 20, 25% of the time the end of the day rolls around, but with last year's phone, I already had to charge it once or even twice uh, to get through that day. So that was awesome uh, to have. If you had concern from last generation to this one, you don't have to worry about it sort of too much. There are other small changes with the design that I didn't really notice or really haven't paid much attention to since day one. Screen's got a slimmer bezel. Um, I don't know, it looks fine. I never really cared about it, and it's certainly not a reason to buy this phone. It also supports Wi-Fi 6E, which is a nice speed bump that I have noticed. I have Wi-Fi 7 at my house, so I have noticed big speed improvements. It also has a second generation ultra wideband chip, which is there as the best thing I can give it. Sometimes it's nice when you're trying to find stuff with your watch. Outside of that, uh, I haven't really cared much about it. These are all kind of small tweaks, but again, I don't really think about them. But there are some changes that I do notice, and that's with the action button and USB Type-C. I know in the comments, I'm gonna get called like super lame and boomer or grandpa, all that kind of stuff. But I set my action button to a shortcut that I use all the time, and that's to call my wife. Because, you know, I call her often. It's been surprisingly helpful. Not to say it was hard to unlock my phone and then dial it. But it's nice to just sort of feel over wherever my phone is, push the button, and have it call. It's a very small thing, something I do very often. And whether you know, you're calling your wife or something that you do all the time, having the action button has been more useful than I really ever thought it was going to be uh, on the phone. So thumbs up for action button. Well, I like the action button. There are still some things that I don't quite get what I haven't done. It's all software stuff. Like, why can't I double click it? Why can't I like long press it, do something else or triple press it? It seems like I can get a lot more use out of it than just pressing it once. I'm assuming Apple will fix that with iOS 18, but it seems like a weird miss uh, to not have it here uh, at launch or now, you know, almost four months after launch. USB Type-C. And this is something that I thought a lot about prior to filming this video, like how to talk about it. I had a disdain for lightning. Not because I thought lightning itself was flawed, just because I didn't want to carry another cable when I was traveling or, or doing things. Uh, so I was pretty excited uh, for USB Type-C and I ceremoniously threw away all my lightning cables. I now have a 
stupid little dongle that hangs down from my AirPod Maxes that convert lightning to USB Type-C. I really like having it. Now I haven't used it as much as I thought for other things aside from charging. Um, things like you know, external storage for recording, sometimes I'll use, um, but just having the option there, being able to plug in anything I want has been really nice to have. I don't think it's a reason probably to get the phone just for USB Type-C, but it is like a really nice like cherry on top of already pretty delicious Sunday. So now, now that we're in a new year, like I'm saying you guys are deciding whether or not it's a good time to get a new phone. One thing there should not be a debate about is whether you should pick up my legit favorite product of now almost the past five years. It's been on my finger in every single video for every single day for five years. I've talked about it a lot. My favorite tech product really of the half decade, uh, and that is the Aura Ring. I love this thing. I know they sponsored this, but I would talk about them uh, for free, and I do a lot. Probably should get like a referral fee for how many Aura Rings I've sold to friends and family. I love this thing. I've been pretty public about suffering from insomnia and anxiety, and Aura Ring has sort of given me the information I need to better my life. It's a new year, New Year's resolutions. I can see things that my body is trying to tell me that I don't recognize. As I'm sleeping, I can see if my temperature is up. I can be aware that I perhaps might be getting sick. I can see if my heart rate was up and maybe it's, or I did something before bed that I should avoid. Maybe I had a glass of wine I shouldn't have or exercise too close to bed. Uh, I can monitor my stress levels throughout the day and give myself sort of a warning to take a few breaths and calm down. I can track my sleep cycles, my REM sleep, my deep sleep to see how often I'm waking up or not waking up. There were a lot of nights before the aura ring I would think I had a horrible night's sleep. Now when I wake up feeling that way, I can actually check and think, you know what, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I might have thought I was tossing and turning all night, but it was only for 15 or 16 minutes. I know a lot of you guys get similar information from an Apple Watch or a watch that you wear. I can't wear a watch when I sleep. It gets caught on my pillow. It's uncomfortable and it's big. Something this small that I wear as a wedding ring anyway is the absolute perfect piece of technology to give me the information I need about my body. My wife wears one as well, and we'll see who has the higher readiness scores in the morning. The other one has to get the kids ready for school. I love it. If you take one recommendation from me all year, look at the Aura Ring. If you want to learn more or check one out for yourself, all the information will be down below. So as far as performance, uh, I was never that worried about the A17 Pro processor inside. I figured it was going to be great because pretty much every other Apple processor has been great and uh, it has been. Uh, there were some bugs up front that made the phone get a bit warmer uh, than usual, but it seemed to have been kind of squared away now. And the phone performs perfectly for every task I do. And like, I don't want to just gloss over the processor. I mean, the fact that I'm glossing over it, I think is a testament to like how incredible Apple Silicon is. This is a process that will probably seem as good like four years from now um, versus what it is right now. It is so good and so fast that I don't notice it. And I want to say that with great reverence for how good Apple has gotten uh, with their processors. One of the biggest reasons to go iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max or the regular 15 is the camera system. And we got a lot of bumps here. 48 megapixel main, 10 megapixel ultra wide, and five times telephoto on the Max. And aside from USB type C, that five times telephoto was the biggest reason for me to want to go to the Max. And I talked about this before, and I know a lot of you guys disagree, but I use telephoto way more than most people do. And again, get sporting events, I take pictures of things that are generally far away. Maybe I'm just blind and like to have things look closer. It has been a welcome addition to the iPhone. It's a feature that I use all the time on pretty much every flagship Android phone, and I am really happy to have it here on the 15 Pro Max. That alone was a reason for me to go Max over Pro, and I probably would have considered going Pro this year uh, if both were the same. Uh, the other small tweaks, the main camera now default, 24 megapixels over 12. I honestly have not noticed a difference there with those photos. They all look good. The colors will still look great. I can still zoom all the way in. And I don't see any sort of pixels. Shadows still look good. Uh, it's more of a flat image than over contrast and super contrast like Samsung does. But they still, in every photo from an iPhone, look some version of good. And I'm not gonna say it's the best camera system out there for every photo scenario you're in, but it's probably the best for most photos that you'd wanna take. 
So on the video side, I think the iPhone is still rocking the best video out there of any phone. Of course, you can now record in ProRes Log. So for those of you that make videos for a living or you care about tweaking the footage in post, this is really great to have. Even when shooting sort of just regular run the mill video, the quality has been awesome. And again, I think it's crazy that everything on this iPhone has been totally commoditized. I'm like, yeah, it's good, but I don't think about it. And it's just because the phones have gotten so good, they've become almost boring. Um, and again, probably a testament to what Apple is doing. So after a few months with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I'm still using it, still doing great. I have no regrets uh, at all about buying it. But the question is, if you're in the market for a new phone right now, the beginning of 2024, should you get the iPhone 15, 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max or make a different decision? I think you have to decide what the most important thing for you in a phone is. Some you just want the latest and greatest, others want the best camera, some want the most affordable phone that just works, and there really isn't one phone that fits all those categories. But the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max does give you a top of class feel and design and materials, it's arguably the best camera system of any phone around. It also starts at $999, which ain't cheap, and, but you are paying for all those features. I'm also tempted here to recommend something like the 14 Pro from last year, despite the battery issues, over the 15 Pro. These two phones are so similar. From screen size, camera system, most of the features are nearly identical. And you can find old 14 Pros on the used market. It's probably the best way to save some money and get near the 15 Pro experience. If you wanna go a different route, Google just released a Pixel 8 Pro, which I love, and Samsung's getting ready to debut whatever's next from them. Or, in 24, iPhone 16 is coming this year. Although I still think if you're willing to spend $1,000 on a phone, the iPhone 15 Pro is still one of the best phones you can get. I don't think you're gonna buy an iPhone 15 Pro and regret the decision. Uh, it might not give you everything you want, but it is a unregrettable phone choice. It might not be an exciting phone choice. It might be a rather boring choice. But again, a testament to how good the phone actually is. Whatever phone you decide to get, it is awesome at least this time we have so many good choices. You have to look hard to find a bad phone. But if you are looking to get a new one, I can still recommend the iPhone 15 Pro and I still really like my 15 Pro Max.